Another issue I tried to clear up with Judge Moore's help was about the word jurisdiction. There's a movement to redefine this word in a way that would require parents to prove not only that their babies are born here in order to become citizens, but also that the parents satisfy the latest immigration standards for being here legally. I have lots of questions about the problems that would cause for citizens, not to mention the unacceptable burdens it would place on innocent babies who had no choice about where they were born and would become the citizens of no country at all. I think I will save the impracticality of messing with birthright citizenship for part three. Before I explain why the scheme simply wouldn't work, I want to explain how it is unconstitutional. The anti-immigration movement calls automatic citizenship for everyone born here birthright citizenship, which to them is a dirty word. The way they want to end it is by changing the meaning of the word jurisdiction in this sentence of the 14th Amendment. All persons born or naturalized in the United States and subject to the jurisdiction thereof are citizens of the United States and of the state wherein they reside. Here's how the anti-immigrant movement reads this sentence. All babies born in the United States are citizens if their parents demonstrate their allegiance to the United States by staying away from the United States for however many decades it takes us to process their forms and by not being citizens of any other nation. The movement thinks if you are a citizen of another country then your allegiance is not to the United States. Even if you have lived here since you were three months old and have been hiring lawyers for the past three decades to beg for the opportunity to pledge allegiance to the United States. And if you break U.S. laws, that keeps the U.S. from having any jurisdiction over you. I guess, by that reasoning, U.S. laws, courts, and police have no jurisdiction over criminals. You can find all kinds of articles about this by googling the words immigration, jurisdiction, allegiance, and loyalty. I used to think jurisdiction means the lawful right of a government to punish you for violating its laws. So I asked Judge Moore if it instead means your allegiance or loyalty to laws. Is the test of whether you're under the jurisdiction of a law whether you can be arrested for violating it, or is it whether you have some kind of emotional loyalty to it? Don't understand that question. I'm sorry. Is it a test of liberty well, whether you can be arrested? The amendment talks, talks about the people who are under the jurisdiction of the state laws are, uh, should have equal protection of the laws. And uh, in the immigration movement, people are, are redefining the word jurisdiction to mean some kind of emotional loyalty. I'm not clear on exactly what they're saying. I don't think uh, jurisdiction is defined as emotional loyalty, no. Uh, if you're in the jurisdiction and you commit a breach of law, you can be arrested. The anti-immigrant movement bases its redefinition of the word jurisdiction on some statements of the same Senator Howard whom the Plyler court quoted. But the anti-immigrant movement prefers to quote different Howard statements. The disagreement between the two sets of Howard statements appears to be based on assumptions about Howard's punctuation made by anti-immigrants. A transcript was made of Howard's statements, but transcribers have to make assumptions about punctuation. You can read what Howard said and how anti-immigrants interpret it, contrasted with how the U.S. Attorney General interpreted it at www.tequilapartyonline.us slash 14th Amendment Jurisdiction dot htm. The Plyler justices, after quoting Howard, to support their interpretation of the 14th Amendment as protecting the rights of everyone living here, other than foreign diplomats who can't be prosecuted for violating our laws, explain the logical consequences of redefining the word jurisdiction. What are those consequences? The legalization, once again, of slavery. Here's how the Plyler Justice has said it. To permit a state to employ the phrase within its jurisdiction 
in order to identify subclasses of persons whom it would define as beyond its jurisdiction, thereby relieving itself of the obligation to assure that its laws are designed and applied equally to those persons, would undermine the principal purpose for which the Equal Protection Clause was incorporated in the 14th Amendment. The Equal Protection Clause was intended to work nothing less than the abolition of all caste-based and invidious class-based legislation. Uh, that is, it was intended to abolish slavery. <laughs> that objective is fundamentally at odds with the power the state asserts here to classify persons subject to its laws as nonetheless accepted from its protection. The entire case of anti-immigrants against birthright citizenship is built upon their interpretations of congressional debate during the passage of the 14th Amendment, but the Plyler justices reach quite a different interpretation of those debates. They wrote, The congressional debate concerning paragraph 1 of the 14th Amendment clearly confirms the understanding that the phrase within its jurisdiction was intended in a broad sense to offer the guarantee of equal protection to all within a state's boundaries and to all upon whom the state would impose the obligations of its laws. Indeed, it appears from those debates that Congress, by using the phrase person within its jurisdiction, sought expressly to ensure that the equal protection of the laws was provided to the alien population. Representative Bingham reported to the House the draft resolution of the Joint Committee of 15 on Reconstruction, that's H.R. 63, that was to become the 14th Amendment. Two days later, Bingham posed the following question in support of the resolution. Is it not essential to the unity of the people that the citizens of each state shall be entitled to all the privileges and immunities of citizens in the several states? Is it not essential to the unity of the government and the unity of the people that all persons, whether citizens or strangers within this land, shall have equal protection in every state in this union in the rights of life and liberty and property. In other words, if the anti-immigrant movement succeeds in changing the definition of jurisdiction in the birthright clause, it will change the definition of jurisdiction in the equal protection clause two sentences later. The equal protection clause is the clause that ended slavery. It is the only clause in the Constitution that prohibits slavery. If that clause is redefined out of existence, slavery will once again be constitutional. And if 11 million U.S. residents disobey our laws because we have made our laws impossible for them to obey, and we make their law-breaking our justification for depriving them of equal protection of our laws, then it will become constitutional to enslave illegal aliens. Given our dehumanization of our undocumented neighbors, even while our courts give lip service to their equal protection of the laws, is it not hard to imagine, once equal protection of the laws is pushed out of the way, a lot of interest in enslaving illegals? Whether or not opponents of birthright citizenship personally would like to enslave illegal aliens, that is the legal effect of the redefinition of the word jurisdiction which they propose. Therefore, I think it would be a good idea to ask them publicly if they are aware of that legal effect and if that is what they really want. Their answers could prove enlightening.